hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. AUA Core Curriculum Super Pubic Tube Placement. In this video, we will review the indications and contraindications for super pubic tube placement. We will also discuss potential complications and discuss a variety of different techniques. Super pubic tubes are indicated when bladder drainage is required. The benefits include decreased risk of asymptomatic bacteria, pain, infection, and urethral complications. They also may improve hygiene and comfort in patients. Specific indications for suprapubic tube placement include urinary retention, postoperative drainage, and neurogenic bladder. Interestingly, devices such as the flip flow valve are available to help cap and uncap the SP tube to facilitate drainage as an alternative to CIC. Other indications for suprapubic tube include decompression in poorly compliant bladders, as well as in those with urinary incontinence and urethral strictures. Potential complications for suprapubic tubes include bleeding, infection, and damage to adjacent structures such as overlying bowel. Contraindications to suprapubic tube placement include small bladder capacity, uncorrected coagulopathy, and patient-specific impediments. There are a variety of techniques to place suprapubic tubes and are outlined above. Examples of SP tube kits that are commercially available include those such as a Cook SP tube introducer set. Another example includes the Utah Medical Super Foley Kit. Both of these kits will be demonstrated later on in this video. There are a few key things you must consider prior to suprapubic tube placement. First, the bladder should be full and palpable at the time of placement. Ensure that it is palpable through direct feel or via ultrasound. The surgeon can use a cystoscope and fill a bladder to 70 centimeters of water to create a large palpable target and hence an easy placement. Moreover, place the patient in Trendelenburg position to reposition the bowel away from the target and reduce the risk of injury. Always make sure to place the tube extraperitoneally to avoid any intraperitoneal injury later on. Finally, never place the tube blindly if the bladder is not palpable and full. Overall, the initial steps to suprapubic tube placement are universal and summarized above. In short, make sure that the bladder is full. Place the patient in Trendelenburg position, and once you're ready, mark the incision two finger breaths above the pubic symphysis and make the skin incision. Make sure you palpate the underlying rectus fascia to target the bladder prior to proceeding. In the subsequent videos, we demonstrate suprapubic tube placement using a cystoscope for guidance. We believe that this modality is safer for the patient when urethral access is possible. However, these procedures may also be done blindly after confirming bladder entry with a spinal needle. Now review the Selinger technique for suprapubic tube placement. First, we will start by marking our incision two finger breaths above the pubic symphysis. Please note that this was done after filling the bladder and placing the patient in the Trendelenburg position. Next, we palpate the bladder to, to ensure that it is in fact full. For patient comfort, we then numb the incision site with local anesthetic. We then make the skin incision in a transverse fashion after which we can palpate for the underlying fascia and make another incision through this layer. We can confirm entry into the bladder by placing a spinal needle through our incision into the bladder, the placement of which can be confirmed with the cystoscope. The cystoscope can also be used during this process to ensure that the bladder is full. Make sure to hang the irrigation at 70 centimeters of water to adequately fill the bladder. The cystoscope has the added benefit of helping a fluid wide open urethros to help maintain a full bladder. Note, however, that on blind approaches, this can be achieved with a finger or a Foley catheter balloon. Next, we remove the inner sheath and place the guide wire. Now that we have established access, we can remove the spinal needle. Next, dilate the tract using fascial dilators. We can again use the cystoscope to confirm the placement of our instruments, in this case the wire and the dilators. Use the large trocar to dilate the suprapubic tube tract. Firmly place the dilator into the bladder and then confirm the placement using the cystoscope. Remove both the wire and the trocar and then place the Foley catheter through the sheath. Then cystoscopically confirm the placement of the suprapubic tube within the bladder. Then inflate the balloon to secure the catheter. We can now remove and peel away the sheath. Lastly, we secure the suprapubic tube with a drain stitch in the typical fashion. 
Next, we will review the trocar technique for suprapubic tube placement. After performing the universal steps discussed previously, including the transverse incision, as well as confirming entry into the bladder with a spinal needle, we can then place a large needle trocar. Next, we can use the cystoscope to both adequately fill the bladder and confirm placement of the needle and trocar. Next, we remove the trocar and place the Foley catheter through the sheath. Again, taking care to confirm our placements with the cystoscope. Next, we can inflate the balloon to secure the catheter in place. Now, we remove and peel away the sheath. Lastly, we can secure the catheter with a drain stitch in the typical fashion. This concludes the trocar technique. The laparoscopic guided and open techniques are commonly reserved for patients with challenging factors such as high BMI, small bladder capacity, open bladder outlets, and those with prior abdominal surgeries and adhesions. Utilize the 5mm port laparoscope and OptiV trocar and enter the peritoneum. Once in the peritoneum, assess for possible adhesions and take them down if needed. Fill the bladder cystoscopically and observe the bladder fill using the laparoscope. Once the bladder is full, use a laparoscope like as in Landmark to ensure that the spinal needle you put in stays extra peritoneally. The needle should only be seen in the cystoscope, not the laparoscope. Once you are confident that the tract has been obtained, use the Selginger or Trocar technique as previously discussed and place the suprapubic tube. Although not shown, it may be helpful to place additional anchoring sutures to tack up the bladder to the anterior abdominal wall to provide extra support. The initial steps of the open cystostomy technique are outlined above. It is important to ensure that the bladder is full and the patient is in Trendelenburg position. Once you start, mark an incision two fingers above the pubic symphysis and make your skin incision. Afterwards, deepen the incision through the subcutaneous tissue and fascia and utilize retractors to expose the rectus sheath and muscle and identify the bladder. Afterwards, place stay sutures to provide extra support. Finally, make a 2 cm transverse incision into the bladder and identify urine. Place a suprapubic tube catheter, inflate the balloon, and secure it with absorbable purse string suture. Close the overlying layers and secure the suprapubic tube in the standard fashion. Overall, the suprapubic tube provides an excellent alternative to indwelling Foley catheters. There are numerous techniques available to use, and it is important to understand the contraindications and anticipate possible complications that occur. We hope that this video will make you comfortable placing a suprapubic tube in any setting with different techniques.